How dare you talk to her? You're my friend! She screeched. What do you mean? I said, feeling utterly confused. You're my friend only. It's stupid that you're talking to other people. So stupid. I gaped. Are you for real? I moved closer and lowered my voice, glancing around the school hallway, hoping that no one had heard her. Why is it stupid for me to have other friends? She stepped closer and narrowed her small beady eyes. Because you're my friend and no one else should be. You're not allowed to have other friends. Do you understand? I'm not allowed? I laughed. Surely she was teasing me. But she didn't smile. Her thin lips pursed. You're crazy. I moved back and noticed for the first time how much like a snake her dark eyes were. How had I become friends with her anyways? Has she always been this creepy? And what was that about not having other friends? No, no way. I took a deep breath. I will have as many friends as I want, so deal with it. You'll be sorry, she seethed. I watched her storm away and knew immediately that she meant every single word. A shiver ran down my spine. This was going to be a hard school year. It's Steph here. And it's Esther. Hi, happy Friday. Okay, so Esther, the story. Oh, yes. What did you think of the story we just read? Well, really creepy. I can see it in my head. I can see the hallway. I can see the darks. I can see light flickering. It's just scary. Like a movie. But, girls, the thing that stands out to me the most is that this is not just a story. This actually happened to somebody. Yes, this is based on true facts. This is true. So today we're talking about friendship. Yeah, and that's a really big deal. It's a huge topic and we're only going to cover a few things about friendship, but we hope that helps you in any way. Yes, you might have to unfortunately get rid of some friends or evaluate some friendships you do have or just embrace the ones you have and say, whew, I'm so lucky. So yeah, let's get into it. So Steph, have you ever had a close friend or do you have a close friend now or close friends? Uh, yes. So I'm trying to think back. So in primary school, we had a little group of friends. I'll tell you about that later. High school, I did. I had two really close friends. Unfortunately, we did lose touch after high school. We went our separate ways, which happens a lot. Um, and now I do have close friends, probably, I don't know, three to four, maybe. It's not a lot. I mean, I've got lots of people I know and that we talk to and things like that, but close, close friends, three or four. Yeah, Max. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Good friends, it's just a few. But um, throughout the years, I also had bad friends. Mm. Maybe I wasn't a good friend at some times as well. But, you know, all that, you kind of grow through it as you get older. So, girls, thinking about friends, not the ones you have now, but in general, I'm going to give you some writing time and I want you to write down maybe five, yeah, five to eight qualities that you think a friend should have. So not the ones you have now, just things that you think in your heart a friend should have. Okay, so now, girls, you would have done your list. But I want to ask Steph, do you have a list of qualities that you want in a friend or look for in a friend? Yes, I do. Okay, so I've got someone who is loyal, you know, that won't betray you. Someone who is trustworthy and that keeps your secrets so that's not going to, you know, you're going to say, oh, you know, this and this happened and then the next day everybody knows. We don't want that. A gossiper, someone that gossips, you know, about their friends to you and then about you to them, you don't want that either. Someone um, who doesn't make you feel like a loser that, you know, oh, you're lucky you're my friend and when you're with them, you just feel bad about yourself. I don't like that kind of thing. 
Someone who can encourage me spiritually is another one. So if I'm going through a problem or they're going through a problem, it's nice to have a friend to say, you know, I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray together. Or, you know, I've been asking God for that. And it's nice to have someone lift you up and and encourage you to keep going forward. Oh, someone you can laugh with and have a good, clean, silly time with. That's always good. And someone who doesn't lie or play tricks on you. And that one's a bit of a personal one. And I will tell you what happened. Okay, so... Remember how I told you before about primary school? Well, I was about probably grade six and I confided in my close friend that I liked this guy. He was in grade seven. Back in that time, grade seven was still in primary school. Anyway, so then one Valentine's, it was February, I got a Valentine's card from him saying that he liked me too and that he'd seen me around the school. And I was so excited. You know, my friend had handed it to me that he'd given it to her because he was shy. So I came home and I told my sister... Well, I told Esther and she's like, that's a joke. That's he didn't write it. I was like, what? Oh my goodness. I felt so confused, embarrassed. I felt like I didn't understand. She goes, no, go and ask. She goes, but he didn't write that. He, if he really did, he might have given it to you, but he did not write that. Go and ask your friends. So I went the next day and yes, my best friend had forged the letter Oh my goodness, I was so angry, upset, hurt. I couldn't believe it. I felt humiliated. I mean, imagine if I would have gone up to the guy and said, oh, thank you for the letter. And then he'd be like, what are you talking Ah, oh. Just the thought of what could have happened makes me mad. But I think the, the thing that hurt me the most was the fact that it was my best friend who, who wrote this letter and pretended it, pretended it was from this guy. Yes, I remember those days. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was, and as a big sister, I was so angry. I wanted to go into the school and I wanted to smack these girls <laughs> because you're protective of your little siblings. And I was just so mad. But of course, I couldn't do that. But I did tell Steph, Steph, you need to face this and you need to tell these girls about it because it's a lie. I just knew straight away when I read the letter. <laughs> no guy will write that, please. Well, a I... A sixth grade <laughs> guy, I mean. <laughs> oh, grade seven. Oh, grade seven. I don't know. I, I decided to give them the benefit of the doubt and think, you know, they wanted to make me feel special maybe. But looking back on it, it's just a mean trick. Yeah, and I think, girls, whenever we're going to do something, think about it first. Put yourself in that situation and say, for example, Steph's best friend then could have said, how would I feel if Steph did this to me? Yeah, well, And that's the only way that you're going to know because you don't want to be like a fool or feel like a fool. You don't. You know to say it. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like you, And I think we don't put ourselves in that situation. We just react and we just do and you can't take that back. Yeah. So girls, tip number one, before you do anything, whether good or bad, think if you are going to like that being done to you. Yes. So on that note, let's get back to our story. This is a story, the one you heard at the beginning of Ellie. So we'll continue it and see what happened. Now, I want you to know one thing. Ellie is not her real name. We're keeping um, her privacy. I threw my bag across my room, turned up the music and flopped on my bed. I wish I could disappear that day away. I hated my life. I hated everything right now. And I hated Vivian most. I sat up and quickly sent a text to my friend Jules. My text said, can I call you? Jules didn't go to my school. She went to a private school in the city. She was my best friend at church and the best listener in the whole wide world. I needed to talk to her right now. My phone beeped. I read the text and dialed. Hey, Elle. Her cheery voice instantly soothed my anger and I started relaxing. We chatted about school and her latest crush. (laughs) It was funny. So what's up? She asked. She knew I never called her during the week unless I wanted something desperately. I told her the whole story on how Vivian didn't want me to have other friends but her, how she said that I would be sorry and how things at school were totally ruined. What do you mean ruined? What happened? I exhaled and sat cross-legged on my bed. Oh well, this whole week has been torture. First, Vivian isn't talking to me. She hates me and she doesn't hide it. She makes it so obvious. And then I found out that she had said some nasty things to my friends that I had said about them and they hate me. And it's not even true. I have not said anything like that. You know me. Yeah, totally, Jules agreed. I continued. I have tried talking to my friends, but they ignore me. They have believed everything that Vivian has said. I don't know what to do. What can I do? My life is ruined. I hate school. I hate everything. 
I feel really bad for Ellie. That's a horrible situation to be like in. It affects so much. It does. And at this, I think at that age, when you're a teen, girls, you would understand that friendship is really, really important. You're at school yeah. most of your life. That's Yes, exactly. And, um, you know, this is quite a toxic friendship. She had a fight with Ellie. This is Vivian. And then Vivian went and spread lies to other friends that, you know, Ellie's friends. And now there's a whole big circle of enemies. Vivian's quite vicious. She's manipulative. She's, um, you know, she even told Ellie she would make her sorry. And she's mm. doing that and by she means getting rid of her friends. Yeah. Yes. And I was remembering when I was listening to this, how hard it is um, <laughs> when something like this happens. I remember that I was in year 12 and... I was in love, so I thought. I was in love with this guy. He was uh, tanned skin, green eyes. I called him green eyes. And he was just a dream. Anyways, it turned out that my closest friend knew that how I felt about him, but my other friend didn't know because my friend liked him as well. <gasps> oh, that's I the know. worst. <laughs> and I knew she liked him, but I couldn't tell her I like him too. It was awful, but... I should have. But anyways, I didn't at the time. I didn't want to tell her. Only my best friend knew. So one day, I remember when she found out that I liked this guy, she got really angry and really hurt. And um, we were watching the boys play basketball. Uh, no, soccer. The boys were playing soccer. And I see her walk down towards this guy that I that we both liked. And she talked to him. He looked at me. <gasps> so straight away, I'm like, what? What oh, is happening? No. And then I'm thinking, and then that's not it. The worst part was she called me over. She indicated with her finger, you know, to come over. And I was like, what does she want? Like oh my, my crush is yeah, there. Yeah. She is there. Why does she, why is she calling me? So I ended up going. And when I got there, she said, oh, Esther, I told so-and-so that you'll like him oh this is in year 12 oh my we are goodness. like 17 and 18 year olds we're not even like 12 or 13 i was humiliated humiliated oh, God. i didn't i wanted the earth to open i wanted the earth to suck me <laughs> and i wanted to disappear forever that was the most humiliating yeah. mean thing in the world i would have rather her you know talk about me behind my back, but to t tell this guy she likes you, blah, 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 blah. And he was, oh, what he said was, oh, I'm flattered. Like he was very nice about it, but it was the most humiliating <sighs> thing. And it took us a long, long time to fix our friendship. So you I fixed it? We fixed it. Uh, she, I didn't talk to her for a while, for a good month. I couldn't talk to her at all. And she was sending me letters, apologizing, all these things. But I felt like she was being a hypocrite because she shouldn't have done it in the first place. She could have come and told me off, told me whatever, slapped me on the face. I don't care. But to humiliate me in front of him? And the fact is that they weren't even dating. It's not like you were crushing on her boyfriend. No. They were nothing either. He didn't even know she liked him. Oh, that's horrible. That's just... Oh. That was horrible. So, girls, that, that was a hard thing. And I guess I, I agree with the whole forgiveness thing, but... At the same time, I mean, that would, I'd be like, you know what? Yes, I'll forgive you and I'll forget you. I'll be civil if I have to be, but I couldn't be, fr I, I don't know. I just yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah, That's it hard. was hard. But at the time we made up, um, we made up and we fixed things. But I will have to say that our friendship was never the same. No, no trust. Be. No, no. There's actually a quote um, by Robert Louis Stevenson that says, a friend is a gift you give yourself. This is such a cute quote. I had never actually um, heard this one before and I had never thought of friends as a gift, even though they really are, when you have the right ones, that is. So I want you to think back on that quote. A friend is a gift you give yourself. So when you give yourself a gift, do you go through, just say, the rubbish dump and collect things from there and give it to yourself? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Or you wouldn't wrap a snake and give it to yourself. No, that's dangerous. Friends are the same. Like, I really like that analogy. It's true. When I go shopping, I want something nice, something clean, something fresh, something new. I yeah. want to go through the bin. No, something special. So you have to think of this analogy and see what kind of friends you have. If you have good friends that are gifty in your life or if it's friendships that you really can get rid of. 
And you also have to see, are you the toxic friend? Or are you the one that's being mean? It's not hard to realize if we've been mean or not. We know when we're mean. So I want to give you some writing time. So if you put, uh, make like a table and one side put qualities I have and another one qualities I would like to have. So we'll give you some time to write that. Okay, so what actually does make a good friend? Well, Sharon Wheat writes about this and she does some great points. So I want to share that. Should we share that? Yes, let's go. Friendly. It makes sense, doesn't it? A good friend will actually have to be friendly. A friend should behave in a friendly manner. That's usually what attracts you to them in the first place. So a good friend should be friendly towards your family and other friends. It doesn't cost you anything to behave well. Kind. A good friend should always treat you with kindness. This doesn't mean that they're always going to be having a good day, happy and smiling. However, a good friend always treats you in a kind and respectful way. If you say hello, they'll say hello back. They don't deliberately hurt your feelings. Trustworthy. Friendships need to be based on trust. This is a very important part of true friendships. You need to feel that you could share a secret or a problem with your friend without worrying that tomorrow morning at school, everyone will know about it. A true friend listens, respects and offers advice, but doesn't go and gossip about you. Respectful. A good friend always treats you with respect. They may not always agree with your viewpoint, or what you believe, but they will still be your friend no matter what. It is impossible to find a friend that you will always agree with 100% of the time, but you can find a friend that will respect you even when you do make a mistake or disagree with you. Loyal. Loyalty is an all important quality of a solid friendship. Loyalty means that no matter what, your friend will stick by you and stick up for you in front of other people. For example, another group of people are talking badly about you without you being there. A true friend will speak out in your defense and not agree with others just to save face, which means to look silly in front of the others. Humorous. Humor is not essential to every friendship, but it sure does help a lot. Laughing together is one of the best things about friends. You may laugh at the same jokes or find the same type of movies hilarious. And being able to laugh and smile just further adds to the bonds of friendship. Communicator. Imagine calling up your friend on the telephone and not getting much of a response when you asked questions apart from the occasional yes and no. Firstly, it would make the whole conversation pretty boring, one. But it would also make it difficult to know how your friend is feeling. Good communication is important for any relationship, especially in keeping your friends in healthy working order. Selfless. A true friend is selfless. This is not to be confused with the word selfish. That is the opposite to selfless. A friend that is selfless will sometimes play a game or go somewhere with you, even if that's not their favorite thing to do. Being selfless means sometimes putting your feelings aside and put in your friend's feelings first. For example, your friend loves bowling and really wants to have a birthday party at the bowling alley. It's not your favorite thing to do, but you agree and you will have fun because it's something your friend would enjoy. And after all, it is her birthday. Honest. Honesty is such a valuable part of friendship. Without it, you don't really have a strong friendship. But being honest in a friendship means that sometimes you might have to tell your friends something they really don't want to hear. For example, your friend might ask you, do you think my hair would suit me if I dyed it bright orange? She may really want to dye her hair this color, but if you really don't think she should go ahead with it, you need to be honest and tell her. Thanks, Sharon. Those are really great tips. And I think they're a great indicator um, to look at to see what kind of friends you have. But 
How do you know if you have a bad friend? What should we look for? So Sharon does tell us a little bit about this. So he says, So what do you do if you have a friendship that is a bit difficult to manage or it's not healthy? It's a difficult situation to be in when you begin to realize that your friendship is not a healthy one. Try talking to your mom or dad or teacher about how you are feeling. Ultimately, we become like the people we choose to spend time with. If your friend is making you feel uncomfortable by her behavior, you need to make a choice as to whether you want this friend in your life. An adult or an older friend can help you make this decision. Signs a friendship might not be healthy. Number one, she gets easily jealous if you hang out with other friends. Number two, she regularly puts you down and says mean things to you. Number three, she always makes the choices as to what you will do together. Number four, she often gives you the cold shoulder or completely ignores you for no good reason. Number five, she speaks poorly of others behind their backs and bullies others. Some other things to look out for are when these girls have started excluding others from parties or from shopping date, or mocking, teasing, calling girls' names, threatening to take away friendship, I won't be your friend anymore if, encouraging other girls to gang up on this girl, spreading rumors and starting gossip, forgetting to save a seat for a friend or just leaving her out, saying something mean and then following up with "Ah, just joking to try to avoid the blame and a big one is using social media or phone to gossip like text and that to start rumors to say mean things or to forward embarrassing photos of these other girls so those are things to look for in a toxic friendship Okay, so we know what to do or what to look for in a good friend, what to look for in a bad friend, but what do we actually do when we do have that bad friend? Um, I think that's the scariest part because I have been in situations where I don't want to talk to the mean girl, a friend, a frenemy, as you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want, I'm too scared. You want to to just keep the peace and just hope for the best and just go along with whatever happens. And not make her angrier or hurt you more than she already is. Which is a big possibility when you do stand up for Mm -hmm. yourself. And it's, uh, I think it's a mistake to stay quiet. My first tip, it's important for you to talk to that person that's making you feel inferior or making you feel bad. Because sometimes I think some of them don't even realize they're doing it. I think that genuinely, like you said, there are people that don't know they're being mean. They've just maybe grown up in that environment. So for them, it's normal. But there are other people that do know they're being mean. What do you do if you want to talk to this person, but you're scared? Do you talk to them alone? Do you talk to them with someone? Do you text them? What? Where do you talk to this person? I think definitely never, ever, ever alone. I have made that mistake so many times okay. when I was growing up. So girls, if you want to talk to someone, don't go alone. You need to get... Someone else, not one of her besties, you could say, one of her best friends. You need someone who's maybe in an older grade, somebody you respect, and just tell them the situation and have them there as a, um, what do you call that word? Like a witness. What what you want the witness for is so that this other girl, the frenemy, doesn't go spreading rumors about you, that you Ah, said this and you said that. It's not so much for them to defend themselves. It's more for yourself. As okay. a protection. Oh, okay, yes. All right. The other like thing that. is definitely talking to someone, a chaplain, the school counselor, your parent, a teacher, even if you are terrified. Better to be terrified for a little bit than be terrified the whole year and have a miserable year forever. Not only that, I mean, when you do actually come up to face someone like that, it prepares you, I think, for the future because it doesn't matter how old you get, there will always be someone who will treat you bad, even if you're like 30s, 40s, 50s. Yes. There's someone, there's always a bully. There's always a bully. Sometimes it's your own boss. It is. We have lots of friends who have really mean bosses. Thank the Lord we have good bosses. We do, yes. <laughs> but you have to, I guess, build up that courage. Mm-hmm. It is extremely hard and horrible and you wish you could disappear. 
But in the long run, it makes a huge difference. So yes, yes definitely. I agree. Um, you also can, I think online, there are some organizations that you can get counseling, free counseling. That's right. You can call. And you can call them. If you don't want to call them, you can actually chat now just online. online. Yes. You can chat to them and you can tell them they don't know you. They don't know who you are, but they can help you and give you some tips on how you can deal with this situation. So that's the um, another tip. So talk to someone like an adult, talk to the person who's making you feel bad. Um, talk to somebody online as in a safety person, one of these organizations. And the next one will say, and this will be my priority, start praying and have a communication with God. Prayer is a huge thing. I mean, I'm guilty. We don't give it priority. Prayer does make a huge difference and God gives you peace and things get sorted. Mm. And some people think that bullies are just people who hit you or taunt you or pull your hair. But, you know, there is always a mean girl that makes you feel bad. So take it to God. I believe 100% that he is the one that can fight for you. And there's a verse in the Bible (gasps) that we love. And you can find it in Exodus 14, 14. I would suggest girls put this on a card and take it with you in your wallet or behind your phone. You know how girls yes. have yep, behind there and carry it with you because it is one of those um, string type of verse. The other one that I was thinking about is Psalms 56.3. So it says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. Mm. So Combine this one with Exodus 14, 14, which we're not going to tell you what it is, so you can find it. Um, Combine these two together. And then when you're afraid, just know that you can trust in God and he'll be there. So I think we're all probably wondering what happened with Ellie and Vivian, Esther? (laughs) I will tell you at the end. (gasps) Okay. We'll stay here for the suspense. (laughs) Um, Yes. But now we have a question. Oh, yes. The question. What is our question? Okay, our question is from a 16-year-old girl in Perth. Dear Esther and Steph, I really want a job, but my dad says I can't because I have to concentrate on my senior years. But I want to buy my own things and dad's money goes to paying bills and food and all that stuff. Plus, I really want to start saving for a car. What can I do? Oh, that is a tricky one. And I do understand your dad's point of view. I mean, he wants you to have good grades to, you know, go to uni or TAFE and get a career, you know, and set yourself up. Wanting a car is important as well. Um, My advice would be maybe find really close friends or family that are willing to give you like odd jobs, either typing up a letter for them or filing. Yes, it's, um, it's really hard, I think. This question is really hard only because there are some girls that are fantastic at maintaining the balance, the balance of having a job, the balance of doing the, their studies. But it also, at some time, oh, yes. there will doesn't be work. a little downfall. It doesn't work. First of all, I would say to a um, 16-year-old girl is first check what kind of subjects you have at school. What type of homework are you doing at the moment? Are your subjects really demanding? I know that for senior years, 11 and 12 here in Queensland are quite big. And I assume that would be in Perth, the same thing. So you do need to do that. You also need to sit with your dad and you need to work out a plan. You need to tell him that you want to save for a car. So don't do it as a casual thing, but actually say, dad, can we have a meeting? So I would suggest talk to him first, sit down, no electronics, no TV on, nothing, just face to face, even if it does feel strange. Um, The other thing I would suggest is telling him or asking him if there is a way that you could do extra chores around the house and that you could get paid for it or get it like an allowance of some sort. I'm sure there's something or even something else. (laughs) What I'm going to say you might not like. If you have Netflix or something like that, cut it off and get that money for yourself, as in put that money towards your car. Because, in you know, you can YouTube stuff now. You don't need that's to be true. paying a subscription or whatever. But if you count that, that's going to be a little bit of money that gets in your pocket. So these are our tips. Number one, we would say talk to dad first, face to face, no distraction. Number two, start seeing where in the house you guys can start saving money. There could be some things that you really don't need to pay, like subscriptions of sorts. 
Um, that would be my other one. Number three would be checking your school schedule, checking your timetable and the subject that you have. And number four would be coming up with a list of things that you could do either in the holidays or the bigger summer holidays that we have here in December. And that's the only way that I can think that yeah. you could, um, you know, come to an understanding with dad. Yeah. And and that way you're not overwhelming yourself either. Like like Esther said, you don't know your how you're going to take it when you work. I, I actually didn't work when I was in high school. No, me neither. Um, and I don't think I could have handled it. I wasn't big. Yeah. Yes. So um, those are our tips. We hope they help you. And we hope these help any girl that needs to know if they need to work. So that's it, I think, yeah. from us. Till next month. All right. Till next month, girls. Thank you so much for listening. And make sure that you share these episodes with friends. Yes, friendship is really important. And also, if they want to um, sign up to our mailing list so you know when a new episode's coming or where something special is coming because there are some things in the works. Keep mm-hmm. your eyes and ears yes. open for that. Um, yeah, I think there's a link below. Yes, there's a link below that you can click and you can sign up. Yeah, so that's all from us. And right. stick around for Ellie's story. All right, bye, guys. Bye. For the next few weeks, my life was horrible. I didn't know who to turn to or talk with. I didn't tell my mum because I didn't want her to worry. If my mum found out, she would have called Vivian's mum and things would have gotten worse. I had my guy best friend, Todd, but I didn't want him to get involved in the mess. Anyways, one morning as I was walking to my locker, I saw Todd. We had been friends since we were like little kids, like five. He was awesome. Todd was one of the few people that didn't believe Vivian, so we were good. I waved, but he didn't wave back. I frowned. Maybe he didn't see me? I called out his name and waved. He turned, stared at me, and hurried off. (laughs) I heard a laugh behind me. It was Vivian. She shook her head, laughed, and walked away. My heart sank. No! No! That afternoon, I saw Peter, Todd's best friend. I ran and asked him what was going on with Todd. Peter scratched his head. Look, Ellie, this stuff is between you guys. I don't want to get involved. I know, I know, but I, but I just want to know if Vivian said something to him. Peter exhaled and leaned against the pole. Yeah, she talked to him all right. She said some nasty things. And well, Todd's mad. I cringed. More lies. Peter shook his head. I think you should talk to him about it. I nodded slowly. The next day, I was waiting for Todd in the car park. When he saw me, he turned around and started walking the other way. I bolted behind him. If I couldn't fix things with everyone at school, at least I could fix it with him. Todd Winters, I shouted. You better talk to me right now. I grabbed his arm and pulled him. Reluctantly, he stopped and turned towards me, his eyes sad. The bell rang, but we continued talking. Turns out Vivian told him that I had talked to her and told her secretly that I was on drugs and that he was selling the drugs to me. I couldn't believe that he would fall for such a silly lie. That was not me. I told him that I would never say that. I also told him that Vivian and I hadn't talked in weeks. And did he really believe that? He hung his head and apologized. He said that he just reacted and he gave me a hug. He told me that we needed to come up with a plan to stop Vivian. He said that I needed to talk to the principal. I was terrified. Vivian would be furious. Yeah, she might be, Todd said. But she'll start ruining your life and reputation with the teachers and that'll really hurt you. You could get expelled. He was right. I couldn't let that happen. He ended up coming with me to the principal's office and I told her everything, even though I was freaking out. They talked to Vivian and she denied everything. But when they called me, her and Todd to the office, she didn't know what to say. She did confess to some things, not everything, but at least that was a start. Some students found out what Vivian was really like and she lost lots of friends. And I worked slowly to build my friendship again. The year went by really slow and there were good and bad days. But during those times, my true friends stuck around and supported me. 
My mum also talked at school and Vivian and I were split up from class. We weren't in the same classes anymore. This made things a lot easier. We don't talk or say anything good or bad to each other. Sometimes I see her around, sometimes she sees me around, but that's it. It was really hard to stand up, but it was the best thing to do. I live my life and she lives hers. You're listening to Shane and Shane, Psalm 139, Far Too Wonderful. Yeah. 